how they release the aluminum oxide and spread it around. The problem and the difficulty with rocket fuel is that it's highly volatile, has severe impacts on agriculture, and also has aluminum particulates um, included in the fuel itself for rocket fuel. So not only is it damaging to the environment every time a rocket is shot off, but it adds um, a load of aluminum particulates, and then if they want to put up aluminum oxide dust cloud, they can use the rockets to cover entire uh, parts of the country with this particular um, uh, dusting uh, to conduct various experiments, including geoengineering experiments. The issue about geoengineering in the United States is that the UK Parliament in um, Britain and the United States um, Science and Technology Committee held hearings in 2009 and 2010, both issued final reports stating that some geoengineering programs were going on, not only ocean iron fertilization, which has turned out to be a disaster, but other types of experimental programs like experimental weather modification programs are ongoing. And they want to set up between the United States and Britain a glo what they call global geoengineering governance, where they introduce particles and chemicals and cloud whitening and other programs into the upper atmosphere through the use of rockets or jets or uh, various other sundry uh, delivery methods. And what they're going to do is they want to reduce the amount of direct sunlight reaching the Earth in order to um, slow down or stop global warming, or at least to um, put off the, re the results of warming in certain areas because they want to cool us down. We already know that the jets are warming us up because when they produce the man-made clouds, uh, Stanford University studies and NASA studies um, and United Nations studies all show that uh, this, um, these persistent jet contrails, when they turn into man-made clouds, actually exacerbate warming in areas of the Arctic and Alaska, for example. And this, the geoengineering, the putting up of particles and chemicals, and they say, well, it's going to cool us down, but the, it's going to cause acid rain. It's going to cause air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, unintended consequences, tree deaths from the acid rains, all kinds of problems. But uh, that's all acceptable if we all live in that experiment, just so that they can experiment putting particles and chemicals into the upper atmosphere. So part of the, the way that they're going to be doing that is they're going to be using um, rocket fuel and additives like soot or carbon black into rocket fuel so that they can, um, in other words, put this up into these huge dust clouds over uh, the United States and other areas of the world under the approval of something called global geoengineering governance. And we are fighting um, and saying that this is a human rights violation, that there should be no releases in the upper atmosphere. Um, with regard to any type of experiments that's going to have the potential to harm the Earth. Um, and so the implication from this is tremendous, and it's being pushed very hard in the United States right now and in Canada. Mm. That's, that's, uh, that's crazy. Um, we know that um, Australia is one of the many countries that have been uh, used to dump nuclear waste as have the waters, including those around New Zealand. Um, of course, the horrific events at Fukushima should be paramount in everyone's minds, especially those in the Northern Hemisphere and the Pacific Island nations. The uh, whistleblower, Lauren Murray, states that uh, airplanes are completely contaminated inside and out, and this is being ignored by the authorities. Cliff High stated that he has two pilot friends um, both have their have left their roles in one taking early retirement and the other flat out quitting after taking Geiger counters on their flights with them and then being uh, reprimanded for taking these readings. 
anyone uh, flying should be aware of this. Um, but uh, also the experts from Japan and other heavily radiated areas have not ceased. Supermarkets and malls importing uh, from northern hemisphere have become time bombs for their, their hot uh, particles. Um, you have hundreds of documents related to nuclear issues on your website. Uh, what are some of the key issues that uh, people should be regarding practices in the U.S. concerning um, these nuclear-powered programs and nuclear waste disposal? If you take points. Well, first of all, we have nowhere to put nuclear waste. There is no storage for nuclear waste. There is no safe storage. A lot of our storage is in holding ponds, similar to what was uh, what um, lost um, that Fukushima had. For example, uh, we have these rods, these highly radioactive hot rods that are sitting in these ponds all over the United States. It's a disaster waiting to happen, and we have no place to store the waste. There's no safe place to put it or store it for any long period of time. And our plants here in the United States are getting old. They're rusting out. They're leaking. So we're in a, a catastrophe situation here in the United States with our plant, and yet the United States is pushing very hard to revitalize nuclear power within the United States to the tune of $34 billion dollars in the president's budget, and also they're pushing very hard to escalate uh, the usage in some of the other countries. Since Fukushima, that's cooled a bit, but the United States did quit testing for radiation coming from Japan for the most part. They did quit testing the food. They've um, quit testing because they don't want the American people to know how bad the radiation is uh, and the exposures are from these hot particles. As a matter of fact, there's a, almost an entire news blackout uh, across the United States now because they don't want the people to know how bad it is because then they couldn't go through their nuclear power revitalization. Mm. This is... This is this is one of the biggest cover-ups, uh, you know, in our history, isn't it? So, so people in the United States are, are being lied to, uh, we're being lied to, and uh, and then they're not going to step up and, and tell us. So, Rosalind, you know, I understand that uh, even Canada has been uh, grossly affected with this radiation. You yes, you absolutely, yes. And um, we know that some of it went worldwide, in other words, traveling around the world uh, from Fukushima. We know that they won't get it under control for another year, and, and they can't. It's melted down, and it's just too hot. So there's no place. they have no place to store it. They have no place to control it. So it's become a worldwide problem, uh, not only for us who are downwind of it a lot, but it's going to be—it's going to have its impact um, around the world eventually, and to all of our food supplies everywhere. Uh, Hawaii was hit. Hawaii was hit very, very hard, weren't they? I mean, within two days, uh, and these people had no uh, no idea. Uh, you know, they're out there on their beaches, um, sucking up the radiation, I guess. And and many of our people there are, are flawed now. They they understand. Uh, a little bit of what's happening there. There's a huge movement over there thanks to um, people like Michael J. Murphy connecting with uh, the Hawaiian people. Yes. Uh, yeah, that, that's, now that's, that's one of the tools that we use. His, his movie is a good starter into, mm -hmm. into this, um, this area. Now, our, our folk over in Hawaii... Uh, are just coming to the realisation, too, that they are part of, of a mass military project. I understand the, the Navy have taken up there en masse. Uh, That's correct, they have. Mm. And the Navy, uh, the Navy has a five-year warfare testing program going on there. Um, it's escalating. They're testing new weapon systems. Um, I, I don't think that the people there have a comprehension unless they've really read the environmental impact statement, which is huge, to really understand the scope and the breadth of, of what's happening to them. But, they, but, other, but people on, on uh, the Big Island have told me that they're now heavily militarized at this point. 
Yes, we, we're hearing those reports as well. Uh, what's this doing, you know, to their their land? I understand that uh, their foods are, are going. To, they're only going to be able to grow our Monsanto GMO aluminium resistant seed. You know, uh, this beautiful nation is just being destroyed. <coughs> Yes, but we're feeling it all over too. In other words, we're seeing the we're already seeing the consequences in the tree decline here. Whole suites of tree species: the Douglas fir, the redwoods, the oaks, the manzanita, the pine trees. Um, all of our trees are beginning to show the effects of what of our upper atmospheric experiments, and so. Uh, we're, we're destroying ourselves at this particular point, and um, it, it's hard to get people to understand the scope of what's taking place because the news media never covers it, um, especially here in the United States. Our news media is so corrupted that we hardly hear anything that's going on in other countries as well. We have to listen to foreign news even to find out what's happening in other countries. And I have to talk to people from other countries to find out what's happening on the ground because there is no real reporting being done here at all. We are practically blocked out from foreign news. Yes, yes. Well, we're, we're happy to assist you with, um, with the news from down under. Most of, you know, most of the work that's being done in this, is, in this area is actually being done by you, Rosalind, the serious stuff. So you know, we're taking a leaf out of your book. No, well, thank you very much. And if I can ever be of any help in the future, please let me know. Well, we, we appreciate that. So, okay, um, just just to change the tone a little bit, there's a lot of controversy surrounding the implementation and use of smart meters. Now, these are, these are being put in en masse uh, in and around the United States. These frequencies are affecting a lot of people. They don't seem to have any power to say no. Um, they're, they're being now being put in into Australia as well and you know our governments and, and talks of course to have this done here also. Um, you have on the Agricultural Defence Coalition site you have uh, much on the smart meters. Can you share with us what you know about them and why people should investigate this important issue further? Well first of all I think they're very dangerous because they expose you to this radiation and your smart meter on your home acts as, a, as an antenna for incoming and outgoing signals. And uh, the closer you are to it, there with the SAGE report, there's a report called S-A-G-E, SAGE, which is on my website. And yes. they talk about now seeing that um, your eyesight can be impaired if you're too close to them. Your, uh, the male testes can be impaired.